Hey, what's poppin'? Jordan Thomas, and today I'm gonna be going over the five red Komodo accessories that you cannot film without. Just a little bit of a play on a series that I love on GQ. I'm gonna go over a bunch of different accessories, so I'm gonna go over a few things that I find really helpful when filming with this camera, beginning with the batteries. So I went with the Red Volt 955 batteries. I feel like this is like the best battery available in terms of price to weight. Um, and one of the things that I like about the overall Red Komodo is wanting to have a simple build, particularly when it comes to being able to like catch fast moving subjects such as people, uh, being able to put this on a slider and be able to do product reviews, as well as just put this on a typical uh, tripod scenario and do longer form interviews. And so for me, in my case, I've been able to get about 90 minutes per battery. Nice thing about these is that it uses a term called hot swappable, which just means that when the battery from one runs out, it automatically switches over to the other, even while shooting. I found this particularly helpful when I went out for my first shoot, when I went to uh, film my squad, Good Vibes Track Club. I didn't even realize that it switched over because I had been just kind of fiddling around, doing this, that, and the other, and it switched over, and that was clutch. That, that saves me one additional step, which makes it more likely that I won't miss a shot. You gotta be able to hold this camera. And because it's a cube, it's not really built in the most ergonomic way. Like it's lightweight, but there's not really a good place for you to hold on to it. And that's why I would recommend the Outrigger handle. Now, for me, it made sense for me to get the Outrigger handle for really two reasons. One, I wanted something that felt like the DSLR that I upgraded from. And when I hold my DSLR, it's literally like a little, little bump in the front where I hold it right here. And I typically hold it from down here. So now this feels like kind of what I'm used to. The other thing is, is oh, the other nice thing is that I've got the, the trigger right here in terms of being able to start and stop video. The third thing I would say is that this took away any need for me to think about what I was gonna do far as a cage. It's got a couple of mountain uh, threads there. That's what I have the uh, monitor attached to, as well as you can adjust it so you can flip it up if you need to change your angle. There's a bunch of different options out there and I wanted to keep things super simple. As well as when I first ordered this, I didn't fully know what I was getting into and so I wanted to stick with RED and take advantage of the accessories that they had available and this to me seemed like it was gonna get me closest to what I was already used to. Speaking of what I'm already used to, RF to EF adapter. Now one of the other cool things for me about this overall setup is that the RF to EF adapter came with the Komodo. So that's usually like a couple hundred bucks. I didn't have to spend that money because it already came with the camera. And that allowed me to take advantage of having len using lenses that I already have, which are all EF lenses. And so looking right in my kit, I went to 50 millimeter F 1.8. To me, this is like the best lens that I could um, grab out of my overall kit. It's lightweight. It's uh, fairly fast uh, being at 1.8 now. This opportunities and there's certainly scenarios where I'll, I'll attach a cinema lens, but the reason that I, I would recommend that you go to 50 millimeter 1.8 is that when it comes to balancing this on a gimbal now, you are money. One thing I will note about this overall setup is that with the handle, you can't mount this to a gimbal. It's literally just like no place on it. It's not even so much a balancing issue, at least with the uh, Ronin S, uh, which is what I have. I love this camera. I love the fact that you already have a monitor there, but because of the positioning of it, when you get to putting your camera like at eye level, you can't see through it because the screen is on top of the camera as opposed to on the side. No swivel screen here. This is where a monitor definitely comes into play. I went with the port keys, BM5W. The number is weird. I'll put it in the description. For me, the choice was simple. Port keys versus small HD, I went port keys. Two reasons, one, my homeboy who uses RED and has been using it for, I feel like, probably like 10 years now, recommended it. That was honestly pretty much enough for me. Second thing was, even in doing a little bit of research, small HD monitors weren't available, as well as you need additional cabling in order to do what? Control the camera wirelessly. So as long as you get an SDI cable, connect that into your monitor, just so you can get the video input. Now you can control your iris, your shutter speed, your start and stop. So for whatever reason, if I don't want to be able to you know, turn the video on and off from the handle, I can do it directly from the monitor. Now, one thing I will say about this overall setup is that I actually would prefer something that allowed me a little bit more flexibility in terms of like where I put the monitor. Right now I can, I can take it off and do that, but I actually saw something uh, from Zion that allowed me to actually be a, do, a, do a little bit of a faster quick release. 
as well as something from um, Small HD that will allow me to swivel this around a little bit more. And last and certainly not least, you need something to capture all this on. So I went with the Red Pro CFast 512 gigs. Uh, once again, I didn't really have time to be messing around, looking around, trying to find the cheapest thing. I was already willing to spend over $6,000 on the camera. I figured it makes sense to go and get the best media available. The other nice thing about having a 512 gig card is that typically for the amount of footage that I shoot in any given um, instance, whether it be 5K at 24 or you know 2K um, at low quality for over a couple of hours, this card can handle it. In the future, I'll probably buy a few uh, 256 gig cards, but 512 for me right now takes me through any of my product reviews, takes me through any interview that I do, and certainly allows me to capture footage like I did recently when I was uh, filming for my squad, Good Vibes Track Club. What's coming next in terms of this overall look this overall build, certainly I need something that's gonna allow me to have a little more flexibility when it comes to the monitor. Um, and I think I will start probably doing a little bit of research for the cages because the one thing I haven't solved for with this particular setup is audio. Um, it's fine um, for the sake of when I'm shooting like product uh, reviews. Typically when I'm doing interviews, I'm using off camera audio, but I would like uh, a, a scenario where I could have another mounting point. So that might be the reason um, when I do my next version of this build, probably sometime next month, um, where I might look at uh, getting a cage. The other thing that I'll keep in mind is that right now, having three different batteries on here or two different types of batteries is certainly adding to the weight. And so I could see the reason why a person would go more with like the V-mount um, style battery that way you can run power um, to not only the camera, but also to your monitor or potentially a, uh, a focus. So. Those are the things that have come to mind. Let me know what questions you have. I love to hear about you know, your setup and let me know what are the things that I should maybe consider buying in the future to improve on this overall build. That's gonna do it for me. I'll see you next time. Jordan Thomas.